Hey everybody, I'm Christian Saab and this is Brooke Chittle. We're from CPG Careers People Growth and today we are going to talk about a topic that, in my opinion, uh, business owners, they suck at managing their people or even managers suck at managing their people for one thing and one thing only. Big, 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 very common, common mistake. You are taking an employee and having them do something that they don't have a natural talent for. And you have an employee that is constantly wishing that they were doing one part of the business because they know they'd be good at, but they're stopped and they're doing something else. You're limiting people. I think that's a huge mistake that business owners make. And I think it's a huge driver for people leaving a company. I think if, if somebody hates their job, it's because they're not able to do the things that they enjoy doing in the company. Um, and I, and the, there's some scenarios where it's impossible because that company doesn't have that role for those people. But there's so many times where I sit with business owners, managers, etc., and they have the talent, they've got the positions, but they've got the person in the wrong position doing the wrong thing. So I wanted to dive into that. What do you, what do you think of that? Because I, th- I think it's happened to us both personally. I was working at Chrysler and I was an engineer there. And I'm like, I want to be doing something else. Like I want to be doing this part, but they wouldn't let me. It drove me nuts. And I ended up quitting a six-figure job actually to do that. And I'm sure you've been in a scenario. Maybe you can tell me a little bit about you and your background and the job that you hated. Well, I had many part-time jobs. Um, and all the parts that I did have life were transfer. I was not being in the Swift the Butterfly. I enjoyed speaking with people, talking to people, and did not like be pushed behind the scenes and not being able to actually have conversation and connection with people. Did not like the independence of a lot, like like the independence, didn't like the working alone part to it. Um, I left actually a career job because it was very independent. I didn't have many people I was working from studio with, so... Mm -hmm. I felt like I was alone on an island and I wanted to be with people. How often do you think it's happening where people are in a job that they wish they could be doing something within the company or whatever, there's in the wrong role? I think quite often, quite often, because it might be they start off entry level and then a couple of years in, they have the experience and they know the company well enough to know what all of the different departments do and they feel they might be better in a different department, but I think the opportunity for growth isn't there or they just haven't shown their talent in that field and not yet. Um, I think if as an employee, you also have to put forth your talent and your interests and make it known because they are running a company. Well, why don't we, why don't we make it look, let's look at it from a different angle. What about from a job seeker perspective as a person who's designing their career? I think people are very reactive and they just try to find a job just to pay the bill. Yeah. But if you take an extra five minutes and you're looking for a job anyway, so might as well just filter correctly. So I don't think this is extra work because you're already applying. You're already out putting yourself out there. You're already walking in, dropping off a resume. Why not do a little bit of homework and just ask yourself, what's something that I'm naturally very good at? What skill set do I have? Am I artistic? Am I a numbers person? Am I, you know, whatever it may be, right? Whatever it is, do I do I like? If I'm in an admin position, well, the admin stuff that they got me doing, you know, what I'd rather be doing like social media versus like Excel sheets or whatever it may be, right? Like it's, I think as a job seeker, people need to be reminded of what's my natural God-given talent. What is an interest that I have, right? Like, what are you interested in? We'll wear a bunch of it. I know you like sharks. Oh, yeah. I love the sharks. Um, what am I interested in? You're always interested in oh, people. people. You're always interested in people. I'm interested in making my own clothes. I'm interested in, I don't know. I just like having, like meeting new people is probably one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. I find I get closer with strangers that I do with my friends that I've known my entire life just because meeting new people and finding out different people's interests and their quirks and their stories is probably one of the coolest things that yeah. you can do as a human and it's yeah. genuine human connection and people love to talk about themselves Yeah, I've noticed so it's very fun 
reading your book. And- I, there are some people that it's the complete opposite. It's like, I don't care about meeting people. Just put me in front of a computer. Let me do my thing. Right. And that's totally fine. Everybody has their own personality. But like if we put you in a role where it's you're buried in this room, you don't get to meet anybody. And your job is to input stuff all day long. I am probably quit after. And at the end, what, what, here's where it all kind of goes wrong, where a manager will. So if you hear your, if you don't like your job, you're probably not going to do it that well. Yeah. You're going to call in sick. You're going to figure out all the reasons why not to do the job. And you're going to drive everybody crazy. And a manager is going to be frustrated and start pointing the finger saying, Brooke is the worst employee ever. And they're going to say, she sucks. She doesn't show up for work. And she does her job, but does it kind of have the, she's, you know, not doing it happily. She's always negative in the office, right? That's going to happen. How many times is that? That's happening every single day. There's probably, if I were to encourage every business owner or manager right now, if you have a person right now who you're like, man, this person just drives me crazy. They're always negative. They don't like their job. Why are they even here? And your natural instinct is we got to fire them. Yeah. We got to get rid of them. But let's say in your scenario, I buried you into a room and, and you're inputting and we, we hate you as an employee and you hate us as an employer. If I came and I sat down with you and I said, Brooke, I know you just aren't liking this role. Tell me about your interests. What do you naturally like doing when you're outside of work? I think that question right there is so powerful because now I can start getting to know you. And then if I start realizing, wait a minute, you like talking to people. You like being out there and get be curious about people. And you like uh, everything that you just described to me, right? Socializing, learning about people, networking. And I then as a manager realize, well, why the heck do I got you buried, buried in a room? I've got a whole department where it's all about networking and marketing and sales or whatever. And if I told you, hey, would you like to do that? You probably, your face would light up, right? And then, so that's like a perfect example that I feel like everybody could relate to where if you hate an employee right now that you have and they hate you, I think taking that extra step as a manager would not think, I know for a fact, before you go and cut the relationship off, go get to know them as a person. I think it's a one-on-one conversation. Go out for lunch, get to know them as a person, right? Something Because I imagine from a job seeker or a employee perspective, that's something, you know, you'd you'd appreciate right yeah you would have much more respect for your employer for yeah. and wanting to get to know you and spending their time getting to know you you would feel more val- valuable to the company and in return you want to get back more to the company when you feel validated yeah. and when you feel like they actually care about you and you're not just a number yeah the time the time that they're taking out of their day their families to get to know you makes you yeah. gotta work that much harder well even to like a good question a manager could ask you in that intimate you know, conversation or, or, you know, on that lunch you're out is, is there a position in this company that you see that actually catches your attention and you wish you were doing? Yeah. Like what a powerful question. You, you know, you work in the company, you already know all the rules. Are you gravitating towards a certain department where you're like, you, you feel like you'd be a natural at it? And I think before a relationship has to come to an end, I think it's try it. Get to know the person and their their ability and make sure they're not in the wrong role. That happens. I can guarantee you that's happening in 95% of businesses. I can guarantee it. 100%. I'll, I'm willing to bet my whole life on it that almost every business has, including like myself, I've had that scenario happen here, right? So, you know, for me, I learned that lesson when I'm interviewing with somebody or when that person is just starting with us. It's very... You know, I want to get to know you, your personality, who you are, what catches your attention. We found out that I, where my niche was, was going to expos. We took yeah. a little bit of me working here before we figured that out. We were like, oh, with not working, why am I not, not not enjoying it, but why was I not thriving as much as I could have been? Yeah. Then we found out, oh. Say so you don't want trade show, change everything. You're like, I just want to be in a room with a bunch of people and say hi to everyone. No, I- That's it. Right, so I don't want to be stuck on a phone calling people in an office. Yeah. I want yeah. to be out there. And yeah. from there, it completely. It's it's a big problem in every business, and I want to make sure that we highlight it over it. Any key kind of you want to? I want you to end it off. Give someone a piece of advice. I do think that most of it is on the business owner's shoulders to make that conversation and make that change happen. Obviously, because uh, as an employee, you can know all your strengths, but there's still the power dynamics there that keep you from speaking it 
But if you do have a good relationship with your boss or with somebody, a superior, maybe you start that conversation a little bit to put yourself out there a little bit because people aren't as scary as you think that they are. And if they are scary, maybe they're not somebody they do want to work away. You bring up a really good point where it's like it could be intimidating for a job seeker or I keep calling job seeker an employee um, to go up to the boss saying, listen, I don't like this job. I don't like it, but I like this other one and I really want to do it. I think I'd be, you'd be utilizing me a lot better if I think I, for me personally, as a manager, business owner, I, I would love it if my, if every one of my employees came to me and said, I think you could use me better over here. You know, at the end of the day, I'm paying you. So if I'm paying you, you know, might as well, if we're looking at it from our perspective of, of, of money, might as well utilize it to the best of our ability and have a happy person at the end of the day. And the amount of uh, confidence that it takes to do that, I think, shows that they are a strong employee that you want to have within your business because they were willing to speak up when they aren't happy instead of... And it's better to speak up when you're not happy yeah. and not do a bad job. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you're just doing a bad job, you could be killing your chances of getting into the departments that you want to. So stick it out. Put in as much effort as you can. Managers should be helpful in the sense of having that open door to allow conversations because it is intimidating for, let's say, a scenario of a a 21-year-old young female starting a career and her manager is a 55-year-old construction worker who's a, a manager, like, very difficult to talk to, right? It's very intimidating to be able to have that. So I think managers, those dynamics should should be welcome. And I think managers should take the first step to keep the door open and to encourage that. Good. Okay, well, we'll leave it at that. Thank you for, for a great conversation. Okay. Well, well, that's that. Hey, thanks for watching our content. Listen, if you're running a business and you're struggling to find staff, I want to introduce myself. My name is Christian Saab. I own CPG Recruitment, and I help companies across North America find the people that they need to find. Listen, a great business cannot be built unless you've got great people. You and I both understand that having the right people on your team is so important, and that's where I could come in and help you. So listen, I want you to shoot me a text message. Here's my direct cell phone. Have my number. Reach out to me. I'd love to hear your story and get to know what you're trying to accomplish, and that way maybe I can help you fix this problem.